long before alligators ruled the swamp. And while dinosaurs thundered across the earth, a new apex predator emerged. It wasn't a T-Rex, it wasn't a raptor, it was a crocodile, one so massive it could bite a dinosaur in half. This is the true story of Dinosuchus, the prehistoric crocodile that hunted dinosaurs in ancient America. Roughly 80 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous period, the continent we now call North America was divided by a massive inland sea known as the Western Interior Seaway. This vast body of water created two distinct landmasses, Laramidia to the west and Appalachia to the east. These regions were lush, teeming with life, and home to some of the most iconic dinosaurs in Earth's history. In Laramidia, forests sprawled across volcanic highlands. Towering hadrosaurs moved in herds, and early tyrannosaurs prowled the woodlands. In the swampy lowlands of Appalachia, primitive horned dinosaurs mingled with pterosaurs that soared through humid skies. But beneath the muddy banks, along rivers and coastlines, a silent predator waited. These wetlands were more than habitats, they were hunting grounds. And while most eyes were on the towering beasts of the land, few realized the real danger came from below. Enter Dinosuchus, the terrible crocodile. This was no ordinary reptile. Measuring up to 35 feet long, it was the size of a city bus. Weighed up to 10 tons, with a skull stretching nearly six feet, Dinosuchus had a jaw built for destruction. Its massive tail propelled it through water with terrifying speed, and its back was covered in bony, ridged armor. Its closest modern relatives are alligators and crocodiles, but this ancient beast was in a league of its own. While most modern crocs ambush smaller prey, Dinosuchus hunted full-grown dinosaurs. This wasn't a scavenger, it was a calculated killer. Its fossils have been found across a wide geographic range, indicating it was not a regional anomaly but a dominant force of its ecosystem. What made Dinosuchus such a deadly predator wasn't just its size, it was how it used it. Its teeth weren't sharp like those of a carnivorous dinosaur. They were thick, round, and conical, designed for bone-crushing force. Its bite force is estimated to be over 20,000 pounds per square inch, rivaling or even surpassing the mighty T-Rex. It used the water as its weapon. Camouflaged in muddy shallows, it lay in wait. When a dinosaur came close to drink or cross a river, Dinosuchus would explode from the water in a burst of violent energy, then dragged its victim underwater, using a death roll to incapacitate and drown them. This wasn't mindless aggression, it was evolved precision. Among its most common victims were the hadrosaurs, the duck-billed dinosaurs. These gentle giants would travel in large herds to lakes and rivers, often with young at their side. Dinosuchus targeted these gatherings with ruthless efficiency. Fossilized bones of hadrosaurs have been found bearing tooth marks consistent with Dinosuchus. The spacing, depth, and shape match its jaws exactly. Some bones show partial healing, suggesting not all attacks were successful, and some victims escaped, wounded but alive. Juvenile ceratopsians, early tyrannosaurs, and even the occasional ankylosaur may have fallen prey. Dinosuchus didn't discriminate. If it moved and was within range, it was food. Unlike most large predators that thrived in localized environments, Dinosuchus expanded across the continent. Fossils have been discovered as far west as Utah and Montana, and as far east as Georgia and New Jersey. It adapted to both fresh water and brackish habitats, thriving in estuaries, rivers, and swamp basins. This wide distribution tells paleontologists that Dinosuchus wasn't just successful, it was dominant. It had no equal in its ecological niche. 
From Laramidia to Appalachia, from forested floodplains to coastal mangroves, it was the undisputed ruler of the water. Yet even apex predators face challenges. In western North America, early tyrannosaurs like Albertosaurus shared the land. Though they couldn't compete with Dinosuchus in water, they may have confronted it over carcasses or nesting grounds. Juvenile Dinosuchus, smaller and more vulnerable, were likely preyed upon by terrestrial predators or rival crocodilians. And within its own species, violence was common. Fossil skulls show puncture wounds that match Dinosuchus's own teeth, evidence of intraspecies combat. These fights may have been over territory, food, or dominance. It wasn't just a hunter. It had to be a warrior, too. Roughly 73 million years ago, Dinosuchus disappeared. Its extinction remains a mystery. It didn't vanish during the mass extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs. It vanished earlier. Subtle shifts in the Earth's climate may have dried up its swampy hunting grounds. Or new competition may have disrupted its food chain. There is no definitive answer. What we know is that its fossils become scarce. Its territory recedes, and then it is gone. No direct descendants. No modern analogs of the same size. A true giant lost to time. Though Dinosuchus is gone, its legacy endures. Modern crocodilians have inherited its strategy, ambush, patience, power. In every river where a croc waits, there echoes a shadow of Dinosuchus. Its story bridges science and imagination. A creature that hunted dinosaurs, that ruled without the fanfare of claws and roars. Instead, it ruled with silence, strength, and timing. Rebuilding Dinosuchus takes a combination of science, technology, and imagination. Most fossils are incomplete, often just skull fragments, vertebrae, or bony scutes. Yet from these, paleontologists create full-body reconstructions. They scan, sculpt, simulate, piecing together the past. Each fossil tells part of the story, and science fills in the gaps. What emerges is no myth, but a predator that truly existed. Could evolution give us another Dinosuchus? In some ways, it already has. Modern crocodiles are survivors. With warming climates and changing ecosystems, some scientists speculate that crocodilians may evolve larger forms again. DNA from Dinosuchus is lost to time. Cloning it isn't possible. But evolution is unpredictable. If the right conditions return, plenty of prey, warm waters, little competition, nature may once again produce a reptilian giant. It might not be Dinosuchus, but it could be close. This is Just Imagine World, where science meets story. Subscribe to uncover more monsters from Earth's forgotten past.